This video is about the late Conservative MP Sir David Amos. Now Sir David Amos was the MP of South End and he's famous for promoting South End and he was very prominent when Margaret Thatcher came into power and they won uh, that seat and South End is associated with Essex. You have a program on British British TV called The Only Way is Essex and one of the tributes to Sir David Amos has come from the United Grand Lodge of, of England from the Essex Freemasons and there are 9,000 members of Essex Freemasons who meet in 300 lodges and I want to read to you at the bottom that Paul the Grand Master said this that this is a phrase given to brothers when they die and he gives this same this same phrase to Sir David Amos MP so Paul added that in Freemasonry there is a phrase used on the death of, of a brother held in high esteem. Without doubt with his love for the community he served and the encouragement he gave us in volunteering for good causes, especially during the pandemic, it equally applies to the late Sir David Anthony Andrew Amos MP. It is he lived, respected and died regretted. So he gives him the the phrase of an honorary brother in Freemasonry. So that's interesting. And David Amos has been pictured when he died in the media with his two pugs. So in all the media, as soon as he died, he, he was pictured, this picture was everywhere with his two pugs. And the pug has an extremely interesting history in Freemasonry so it's a symbol of Freemasonry and you can see that in this program on the painter Hogarth though Hogarth was a Freemason and he was a member of the Hellfire Club and he had a dog which was a pug called Trump now watch this his penniless father in fact, the pug provides an unexpected clue as to one of the ways in which he secured his future. Just around the corner from the Hogarth's early home in Covent Garden are the headquarters of a secret organisation. Welcome to Freemasons Hall, home to a fascinating array of unusual objects. But I've come to look at one cabinet in particular, which houses a collection of Meissen porcelain, with its characteristic flinty sparkle. What you may begin to notice is each one features a little pug. Well, all except this one, where the poor dog has been snapped off, but he has left his calling card. Now, you may be wondering what pugs have got to do with the Masons. Well, in the 1730s, the Pope told the Germans that he didn't like the idea of anybody swearing an oath of allegiance to anybody other than the Catholic Church. So they were not permitted to become Freemasons. And so they founded the Order of Pugs, as it was known in Germany, the Mipsen Order. This was a society in which um, men and women could partake. And almost as a, as a send-up of true Masonic ritual, the Order of the Mopses decided that the initiation would involve um, the blindfolded candidate being presented with the rear end of a pug, and you had to um, kiss the ring, I suppose. So that shows you that the pug dog is associated with Freemasonry, Hogarth, who was a Freemason, had a pug dog called Trump. And you have this photo which appeared 
with David Amos and his pug dogs. Now in this interview with Stanley Johnson who was a close friend Stanley Johnson makes a remark about how David Amos poured poured uh, friendship and he sounds like paw like a dog's paw but he actually means P O R E so listen to this and he also says so just watch this which he exuded from every paw and when I say paw I think of the animals I didn't mean P A W although he's probably you know a bunch of dogs who it did exude friendliness from their paws but I mean P O R E yeah and I, I heard that he was often late for things, but the reason why he was always late is because he was always stopped by people who were saying, hello, 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 I'm talking to you. Hello, hello. It was probably in the days before, <laughs> can I have a selfie? But now, were he to walk through our streets, yeah. he wouldn't get very far. Yeah. So he was such a friendly man. And the feeling now, um, with, with you and obviously the animal welfare work that you're talking about, you're saying that they, hopefully they'll name, name the bill after him. Well... I think that would be nice, and mm. by the way, I don't, I don't want to sound as though I'm profiting from this just to, just to plug causes, but I like to think that he might have said, look, you know, don't let a good death go to waste. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Mm. <laughs> Strange phrase there by Stanley Johnson, don't let a good death go to waste. And it uh, seems like Stanley Johnson suffering from foot and mouth disease. And it's interesting how Stanley Johnson is not remorseful or mournful and his close friend has just died. So I find this image very interesting and its historical links very interesting. Thank you.